Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. On Thursday, December 2nd, you're watching a weekly discussion show, Politics for the People. And I am your host, Stephanie Stoldalton. Our show topic today is the Omicron variant of the COVID virus. Where'd it come from? What is it? What's, how are we gonna do, deal with it? I have a guest here to discuss this topic with us and I'm welcoming them to, and introducing them as Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, and Tim Apicella. So given our new condition in, in the land of the virus, or I should say the planet's virus says, now that um, we have this new one, can we start a little discussion about where it came from? Jay, where did this Omicron virus come from? Actually, variant variant of the virus come from. I was telling you before the show, I'm really ticked off at MSNBC and Brian Williams um, for suggesting that maybe it was Biden's fault and that he should have, could have done something. We all heard about this a week ago. <clears throat> I'm not sure what he could have or should have done. <clears throat> and it was, uh, you know, not something that you could anticipate. We know that viruses mutate. And there are thousands of mutations between viruses that are, quote, of concern. <clears throat> Most of those mutations are not of concern. This one's of concern because it's highly infectious. We don't know if it's highly lethal yet. <clears throat> and we don't know how it re uh, reacts to existing uh, you know, vaccines and therapeutics. We don't know. And <clears throat> if you look at the uh, newspaper, the Washington Post and the New York Times today, there's no real information on that. There's not enough time. We have to we have to wait and see. We have to let the scientists uh, do their data gathering. Um, and there's not a lot of data, not in this country. So we don't know yet. <clears throat> and I suggest that, that there'll be a lot of political mishmash back and forth, as there is now in the Senate over um, the funding bill for the government, which is really, uh, how shall I say, insane. They don't want to fund the government until Biden gets off his vaccine initiative. That's insane. Um, and there'll be, you know, political things that happen. After all, this is um, politics for the people, isn't it, Stephanie? Uh, so we're going we're to see that happening for the next couple of weeks. And then we'll hear some, uh, you know, scientific uh, conclusions. But let me say that in, in Africa and in Botswana, there were a lot of cases. The number of vaccinations in that part of Africa is something like, I think it's 6%. It's not very high. And this allows for a lot of people to get sick. And thus, it allows for a lot of mutations to take place. And most of them, as I said, are not of concern, but it's mutating all the time. That's what viruses do. And one of, just one, just one of those mutations turned out to be a, a, bad, a bad case. And now it's spreading around the world because it's highly infectious. So the question is, how much of an emergency is this? Because at the end of the day, you know, our governments, our politicians, who know very little about how to handle this sort of thing, um, are, are going to have to decide what to do. Uh, and uh, to, not to spend too much time on it, my feeling is that we already lost nearly 800,000 people. Uh, if there was, um, say, a car crash in Moila Ili and five people died, it'd be front, front page and everybody would be weeping and wailing. But how about 800,000 people? Where's the weeping and wailing? It's like, it's like the Holocaust, you know, 6 million people. How do you, how do you, how do you react to the, the killing of 6 million people? So yeah. I, I think, I think we're, we're in for it, actually. And I think we have to allow and encourage our government officials to do whatever they think is necessary, recommended by Dr. Fauci and others to protect us and to not let that 800,000 get any higher, whatever it takes. And I, it amazes me, I haven't told you guys, but I had an experience in Long's Drug Store yesterday where I, uh, I met a fellow uh, who was wearing his mask halfway down and he said he was there to get a vaccine, but he hated getting a vaccine. He didn't believe in vaccines. He didn't care about vaccines, um, but he had to get on a plane and this was involuntary. And there he was talking at me with his mask halfway down. I turned my back on him. 
Oh. And what I'm telling you is there are people in Hawaii who don't believe in vaccines. There are people in Hawaii where you have to be the policeman at the elbow. You have to tell them in no uncertain terms, you will take the vaccine. Uh, and we're not doing that just yet. We're getting closer to it, but now it's become all the more emergent. Well, yes, uh, and, and thank you for sharing that experience, Jay. That's very good to know. And uh, I uh, hesitate to ask you if you gave him any advice, but did you? No, I turned my back on him. I did not want to have a conversation with somebody whose mask was down and who did not have, he had not taken the vaccine. This yeah, is but, not to say that the vaccine will necessarily work with Omicron. Yeah, you know, one thing, we had a show about this yesterday. One thing is these, these um, mutations, these variants displace each other. So the first version um, of, of COVID was displaced in terms of the population um, by Delta, okay? And Delta, I suggest, may very well be displaced by Omicron. Uh, and so you don't know whether the existing toolkit will work against the next evolution. Exactly, that's why I was gonna ask uh, uh, Tim, what, how does this Omicron variant compare to the other two strains addressing some of these issues Jay has uh, referred to? So how does it? Uh, we don't know yet, this is my short answer. No. My longer answer is Omicron represents that which we feared. And that's what was um, criticized about third world nations, um, well, second world nations, second world nations, third world nations, not getting enough vaccine to properly you know, have the population inoculated so that these variants don't spread, don't begin to spread. Um, and Africa is a classic example where you have a very low percentage of the population that has actually received any vaccine. So uh, Omicron is a classic example of how mutations occur and why they occur. So to, to the extent of which, you know, how, the ferocity of how this is going to take over, it's, it's unclear. Uh, the stock market seems to be pricing it as it knows something and it's pricing the marketplace as if it's going to be a variant, but not a variant where the vaccines won't be able to prevent it. Uh, we had the gentleman who, who flew into California, uh, a younger gentleman, and he's not hospitalized. He was vaccinated. He didn't have a booster, but he had at least his vaccinations on board. And um, he's been quarantined, of course, but he is not in the hospital. So that an initial good sign, uh, but he also has youth working for him. So we'll see. Was that the um, Omicron that he has? He's been yes. tested? That yes. And yeah, that that's the one that's been detected in the United States. It's in quarantine um, and he was vaccinated. So it's a breakthrough case of a brand new variant. Okay, There's and the second one reported this morning. Okay, the second one is, uh, Jay, that's the Minnesota guy? That's right to the anime convention. What do you know about him? Not much. Okay, I don't think we know much at all yet. As Tim pointed out in the beginning, we're waiting for the data to get collected. Yeah, so what do you think, Winston? Do, you, do we have the tools to manage this, whatever its, its full-blown version is or whatever we find out? What do you think about the, the vaccines we have and the therapeutics? Are they effective enough for limiting its the spread of this version of the virus? Well, from everything we know or that we're being told, we don't have in, enough information to make that determination. However, there's still other variants of the, the disease which are very well uh, um, experienced now, the Delta and the original um, COVID and, and probably some others that, that may be covered with the vaccine. But certainly Delta and the original seem to be very um, uh, respond um, to the vaccinations that we have. It doesn't mean originally the CDC was telling us, of course, in when was that just before end of June or something that we wouldn't be infectious. We wouldn't be contagious if we had the disease. I thought at the time, boy, you guys are 
I know you want to get some, some good news out, but don't jump the gun here. And then, of course, we had the you know, uh, the P-Town outbreak where most of the people had been uh, vaccinated. But what we're finding, of course, is that if you are fully vaccinated, and I think at this point we need to consider fully vaccinated two shots and a booster. And if you've had Johnson & Johnson, I'm sorry, you need to switch over and get your booster with a Pfizer or a Moderna from what I can understand and what I've read, but uh, two Johnson and Johnsons would be better than nothing um, for sure. Um, that yeah. said, how this is going to affect, how it's going to deal with, uh, with this new Omicron, we just don't know. Do we have the tools in Winston, place? Winston, could you comment on the fact that the number of mutations uh, in uh, Omicron is like more than 50? The, the number of mutations uh, in Delta was like four or five. So this is way more sophisticated, complex than the previous jump to Delta. It could be, but it, it, that could also mean that it's that it's weakening or or may burn out. Now, the fact that the that WHO and CDC have that it's a a, a variant of concern, it's or I think is what they call it. it. It's a different level, so they they obviously know something out there. Um, and, you know, we have to go back to the original what we have, which is what can you do personally to protect yourself and the community? And that is at this point, continuing what we've been doing for the last year and a half, washing your hands, wearing a mask, uh, when the shots became available, getting the shots and uh, continuing to get shots. And it looks like, you know, when you ask about the future, these mRNA vac uh, vaccines can be made so quickly that uh, I read that uh, the companies need about 100 days to make the, the vaccines. And because they've been you know, shown to be reasonably safe and effective um, as far as keeping people out of the hospitals and dying, uh, I wonder if the FDA is going to come out with sort of a blanket fast track approval for variants that are coming out in the future. And that it's essentially like a flu virus, because I don't think I don't know that COVID is going to go away in the next few years, and we're just going to have other variants, and we're going to just get boosters and, and updates like that. What yeah. we could do, and there was a great article in the uh, paper yesterday in the Honolulu Star Advertiser, where it said, here in Hawaii, we can protect ourselves by requiring, and the U.S. looks like it's moving to this as well, testing within 24 hours, not 72 hours, 24 hours of coming to the country we need to institute that to the state as well. And then like England uh, is doing within two days after your arrival, you do a follow-up test. And, uh, you know, the U.S., I believe you have to be vaccinated to come here to begin with. So it's a combination of both vaccinations and then testing to prevent uh, more spread. But this, you know, we're, it, it's a matter of days or hours before we see that Omicron is in Honolulu and the rest of Hawaii because we're having 30,000 people come a day and there's really very little control on it. That many. And Jay, do you think that those per, those uh, regulations or those dictums um, are, are going to hold for coming into the country, given what's already happening now, that they're holding up the Congress um, on the debt ceiling because of these mandates of vaccines? Do you think we're going to be safe with, the, the, with those um, mandates that we have in place right now? For the airlines well it helps if you can't you know take a flight without um being vaccinated and without wearing a mask there are some people who really don't like that including the uh, freedom caucus in in the senate they're going to try to stop all of that and there are people right here in hawaii like my friend at long's who really don't like uh, being told to be vaccinated. So the issue is going to be still today, is I don't think Omicron's gonna change this issue one bit, um, whether we can mandate vaccines. In my view, it's life and death. How many more hundreds of thousands of people will die uh, while these guys oppose vaccines? That is insane. Um, so I I'm not sure where it's going. Uh, but one thing is clear is that if you, if we only have a certain number of tools in the toolkit, we should use them. One of them is vaccinations. Uh, everybody, including Dr. Fauci, who I still love, I still love him, I'm telling you, um, uh, is saying that we've got to use what we have. 
This may change. I'm not sure I agree about the 100 days, Winston. Uh, I think it's going to take them a longer time to develop vaccines against a more complex virus. And I think it's going to there's going to be issues about approval at the CDC. There were issues before. Hopefully, it won't get stuck this time. And there'll be issues about distribution. There'll be the moral issues about sending them overseas to try to, you know, have global effect. All these things are not going to happen in 100 days. Exactly. So, Tim, what do you think the Biden, the Biden administration can do about this situation and be accepted by the public and not I, I hate to put it in these terms but i'm going to biden administration needs to be stop being scared of its own shadow the biden administration needs to get the fcc involved immediately we have a almost 800,000 deaths in the united states we have a certain news channel i'll call it QAnon on fox uh, family and friends, I don't care uh, what what the station is, who the host is, who are constantly undermining the credibility of health public officials trying to ring the bell about a new variant. <clears throat> and already, though we know nothing about this variant, really, we have Fox and friends going around, chitting and chatting, laughing it up, that the Biden administration will be introducing a new variant, a new, uh, a new uh, COVID variant, every October, and you can count on it. What the, uh, the little hosts there were implying was, this is again, a political ploy from the Biden Democratic administration, that every October before election, we'll have something new to shake our knees about and be fearful and vote Democratic, because that's almost like having a wartime president. Uh, I'm tired of it. And I, the Biden administration is asleep at the wheel. The FCC should be getting in there and saying, we have a public health crisis, these, these hosts um, are creating an environment that not taking this thing seriously, particularly vaccines. And okay, so, so there's a lawsuit from Fox uh, against the FCC. Let it go to court. Um, let the First Amendment be at issue, but stop them. And the, and the Biden administration has the authority to do this and they're scared, they're chicken. And it's time to stop this misinformation disinformation about COVID and its cures. And uh, that's the first thing that the Biden administration can do. And the other thing is to support, and they are, um, distributions and, 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 and public education. But um, I'm, I'm fed up with it. I'm also gonna mention Laura Logan, a very qualified journalist that worked for a long time at 60 Minutes, has the audacity to compare Dr. Fauci to the doctor of death of Auschwitz, Dr. Mengele. Although she didn't say it was her opinion, she said it's the opinions of others that she's hearing constantly, that Dr. Fauci is no better than Dr. Mengele. How irresponsible in reporting, how disgusting, how not one word, one peep from the Murdoch brothers or, or Murdoch senior himself to say enough's enough. Laura, Laura Logan, tear up your SPJ card, your Society of Professional Journalism, tear the card up and throw it away. I'm done. These are, okay, you're describing political, the political challenges to the administration. So, so Winston, um, what can be done about this? What is it that, that, that Tim is suggesting and calling on, he's calling out the president to do something. So what are those things that he can do that will have effect? Well, you know, the, we saw that this nation, as well as other nations, the EU, um, Israel, Japan's completely closed its borders to everybody, uh, unless you're a Japanese national coming back, and then you're going to be quarantined. But they're, they've got like 100 cases in the whole country now. They've, they don't want it coming in, and they are in a position where they can just close their borders um, to incoming uh, traffic. But so could we. Now, we did that before with ill effects, and people will point out uh, what those were, obviously, uh, here in Honolulu, but we're surrounded by 25,000 square miles of water. We could implement something here on a statewide level if the federal government doesn't implement something, or, or if the federal government does on, a, on folks coming into the country, we could very easily replicate that here and say, 
you have to be vaccinated to come to Hawaii and you have to be tested before and after and, and, and just you know, normal uh, uh, protocol as well as uh, continuing requiring for public venues. I saw that everything was lifted yesterday, uh, capacity controls in restaurants. I'm not really comfortable going and sitting next to someone one foot away as you know, some of these restaurants are super crowded, as we know, uh, here in Honolulu. And I think that restriction was lifted. And I'm not sure if we have to have a, uh, a vaccine card or not. I think that we do to go into restaurants. I don't think that changed. And I think we're still required to wear masks in public uh, venues, but they seem to have lifted caps. And I noticed that the governor has allowed the mayors of each county to more or less come up with their own rules. And they have slightly different rules, whether it's on, you know, Kauai or or uh, the Big Island or Maui or this island. So as far as nationally, you know, I thought when uh, Pete uh, Buttigieg said last week that he, he, I think it was about last week, that he was not going to impose any mandate on people flying on planes or trains as far as having to get a shot. I think that the, the president's also said the same thing, that there will not be a national mandate on this. It doesn't mean that the states themselves and cities and locales can't crack down on this. It would be nice to have a message from the top that says this is an emergency and everyone in the nation needs to pay attention to this, but we're not at that point now. So we've got to devolve to the local level and the personal level. And uh, that's where we need to go. I saw the Greeks, they're taking away people's pensions, a quarter of their pensions. If they're uh, over, over 60, they're taking a quarter of their pension if they don't get a shot because nine out of 10 people dying there are over 60. Uh, the, the Slovakians are doing it reverse. They're giving them about 600 bucks to get a shot if they haven't so you know the stick or the carrot whatever works we got to just look around see what is working our our vaccination rate was revised downward i saw um i think that we were at about 77 percent. so how do we reach that other 23 percent and just let them know this is really important for your health and other people's health and tim's idea is interesting an interesting one we need to reach out to uh religious organizations civic organizations um it, how, schools, however uh, people are getting their information. I saw Facebook was made a massive push to pull down anti-vaxxer uh, uh, theories that, you know, as Tim was talking about. Um, I don't know if you could require Fox to have a disclaimer running on it, like Facebook does that says something like the CDC, like, like, like pills often have this says the FDA does not endorse, the, the, the FDA says this medication or this product is not endorsed, treat or something. Uh, uh, any health condition, maybe something like that. When any article is run about COVID on the news, it has to have a bottom line that says uh, up-to-date news is obtainable at the CDC. And that may be something that for all broad national broadcasters that they have to have when they're running stories. That might be one idea where you could point people to correct and accurate information as the best experts that we have have it. Yeah. Um, and as, as far as the doc Dr. Mengele, uh, comparison that's reprehensible and we have to have everyone just jumping on that and calling that out uh, Jay, crickets. Uh, crickets crickets yeah right correct correct crickets nothing so um jay uh as to winston's uh first comments about the shutdown in, in the of the country um internationally i think we can do that right but we can't do that state by state we've already been through that that's already had cases uh uh, su suing the governor and everything about shutting Hawaii down because just like Alaska can't do it either, but we can't interfere with interstate commerce. And it is, is that, that the part of our law that says you can't shut out people from your state? Is that correct? Can you kind of give us a little bit of information about our- no, I think I think it's clear that you can require people uh, to be vaccinated to, um, or at least to wear masks, you know, some kind of controls on it. But my, my view in general is that, uh, okay, only, only 800,000 people have died over this. Uh, when, when is it a national emergency? Is it 900,000? Is it a million? Is it 2 million? One of those guys in the Freedom Caucus is going to get rational. They're not rational now. And furthermore, there have been uh, federal judges who have uh, set aside Biden's um, orders for uh, vaccination. I find that extraordinary. They, they must be Trump appointed judges. And so what you have is a, is a, mix, a mixture of opinion in the communities, in the states, 
and among the judges in the federal government. And I would not for a moment have any level of confidence in the Supreme Court of the United States. We are completely fragmented on these issues. And you know, for, for Brian Williams to blame Biden uh, for this new uh, <clears throat> Omicron is really ridiculous. I will never feel the same way about, um, about Brian Williams. The, the fact is it came on all of us. Um, the fact is that <clears throat> nothing has changed politically. All the GOP guys, the QAnon guys, the conspiracy guys, they, they heighten their attack on Biden as if it was Biden's fault. They heighten their attack on, on, on any public official who would try to impose these limitations. That is insane. Where do we stop? Two million, three million, four million? Um, in, in China, and we have a host that just got back from a 50-day trip to China. <clears throat> they made him wait in quarantine for 22 days before he could even get out. Um, and had he not complied with any of their uh, regulations about, you know, doing safe things, being um, quarantined, uh, taking the, uh, you know, taking the vaccine, wearing masks, all that stuff, um, he would have been in jail. And that's the way Xi Jinping gets this done. And, you know, you can make the kind of comparison that Xi Jinping makes um, with Joe Biden. Uh, Xi Jinping says to him, we get it done. You get it done? And Biden would have to say, no, we have a lot of trouble. We have to beg and plead and, um, and offer you know, all these incentives. By the way, this one, this one house of ill repute in Europe that is offering free sex if, if you take a vaccine and, and, it, and the business has been gangbusters. That's helpful, Jay. There's an incentive. Well, you know, Tim, Jay is uh, brought I up. I can't the, follow. I can't follow this. <laughs> That's a musical we don't need to follow it very far, okay? All right. Um, Later. Um, the um, what Jay is bringing up too, uh, prior to the the, the red light district uh, being a part of the reinforcement of our our preferences here for how to act under COVID. What about um, the GOP? Are they they are already demonstrating? Do you think they are already demonstrating the use of uh, everything Biden does? Any policies? Any any of these proclamations? They're using this to undermine. Biden for the next election and the Democrats, the Democrats and Biden for the next election. Is that is that what the big goal is here? Because as you say, it's insanity otherwise. Is that the goal, the undermining of the Democrats for the election? Well, they've been doing it from day one. So we have 800,000 people almost dead as a result. So the party of obstruction is the party of destruction. Uh, yes, <laughs> they've been at it for, for two years trying to undermine the credibility of Democrats and the Democratic Party by saying that uh, it's a Democratic hoax. Jay and I did an interview a year ago in March 2020, and the quote from Donald Trump was, it's a Democratic hoax. And that's when we had eight people that, eight Americans that were dead uh, in the Seattle to Kirkland area. So from day one, um, they've been trying to pin um, you know, the sky is falling attitude on the Democrats and there's nothing to fear and that this is just nothing but a flu. Well, 800,000 deaths later, I, you know, that's one hell of a flu. And, and, and they should knock it off. I mean, they really should just knock it off because, and I don't see why I don't get this, but their own constituents are the ones who are dying. Uh, statistics very much show that in those states where um, you know, vaccine is not encouraged and mask wearing is not encouraged and social distancing is not encouraged. Those states and those populations are the ones that are in the ICU and they're dying. When do they get it that their constituents are dying? Well, what, wait, I, I'll go with Jay. Is it 1 million, 2 million or 3 million? What, what number will it take for them to get real? What do you say about the Florida data that shows that they've had reductions in COVID and hospitalizations, the latest data. Again, these are waves. You also have Florida that's not a, a Midwestern state. It's winter time. People are out and about outside. Um, you know, Hawaii has been blessed with this as well. That's why our numbers are the way they are. They're rather, they're low numbers. Um, you know, the Greeks knew this 
millenniums ago where all their forums and uh, activities were held outside, even in winter, because they didn't know what a virus was, but they knew there was a correlation between indoors and death. And believe me, the Greeks had viruses just as bad as COVID, if not worse. Very interesting. Yeah, well, Winston, um, we had a viewer's question, uh, which I believe you may have already answered in, uh, but I was gonna read it to see if you wanted to add any more. So what do you think, this is the question, what do you think the government should do to quell the misinformation? Is there anything specific to misinformation that, that you might wanna add? Uh, that's a million dollar question, isn't it? First of all, they need to produce only accurate clear information you know this even the rollout of the booster has been you know here there and everywhere but to address jay's point we're not china we don't say if you don't get the vaccine we're gonna imprison you or shoot you in the head the chinese can lock down cities of millions of people and basically um you know uh well, who is more the, humane winston the, well, the country it, it, the it country that, that has eight hundred thousand deaths or two or three million deaths or the country that prevents that well, that, is, it, it, that may be, but we're not China. We don't operate like that. We also have a deep history in this nation of anti-vaxxers um, going back uh, the, you, you know, to the earliest days. And so you, you're fighting a, a system of, where people are afraid and don't trust the government and haven't trusted the government for forever, maybe in this country. Maybe it's ingrained in part of the American psyche. So when the government says this, then people say, oh, well, that's come from the government. So I don't know if I can trust it. And that's just the way that that it is here. Uh, as far as combating it, you know, I would like to think that rational, sane, scientific thinking that can be proven, you know, and validated would carry the day. But in fact, we have people that are just going on beliefs because they saw something on TikTok or Instagram that says, oh, if you if you take the vaccine, you're going to sprout antennas or whatever it is. Um, and, and if that's what people, when their level of education or sophistication is there, or if they're leaders in a religious uh, sphere or uh, in their very belief system that says my, my deity or my religion is going to protect me and therefore I don't need to follow any precautions. Um, you have those types of situations too. And then you have others that just say, I don't want to get this vaccine because I don't know what's in it and it could be poison. Well, I don't know what's in Tylenol. Uh, so there's a lot of countering to that. We're not going to get anywhere. Wear your mask, get your shots, you know, yeah. wash your hands, do what you can. That's all we've been able to do the, all these years and talk to people and really make an outreach to those and see if you can get to them. But again, the standard bearer of the Republican Party, as we just found out from The Guardian yesterday or the day before, was tested positive before his debate with Joe Biden and right. infected a whole bunch of people and then had a super spreader event at the Rose Garden to introduce Amy Colby Barrett. So we're not talking about people that are necessarily dealing with principled leaders or uh, rational thought processes here. Oh, right. So let's do a lightning round here. Uh, we're, we're set to close shortly. So sure. let's do a 30 second comment to this, uh, this, this paradox that we're trying to work with. So Jay, would you give us a lightning round finish here? Yeah, uh, the, I just saw this morning, there was a case decided, I think it was by a court of appeals somewhere in the country, on, on, a, on a claim made by um, anti-vaxxers um, that a given social media had no right to moderate their comments in the social media, no right to exclude their anti-vax comments in the social media on the basis of the First Amendment and freedom of speech. Oh. This is a very interesting counterclaim. The counterclaim, which prevailed in that case, but who knows what will happen when it goes to the Supreme Court, was that social media also has First Amendment rights. And in moderating um, comments that they feel are inappropriate and against the public interest, they are exercising their First Amendment rights. And that's what this court found. This is really mind blowing. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a way in which social media can deal with the crazy First Amendment claims 
by the anti-vaxxers. Your thoughts on that, Tim, or in addition to that? Well, I, I, I say let the, let the government do what it needs to do to prevent this virus from catching fire and then the, the lawsuits be damned. Deal with the lawsuits when they come. That was Donald Trump's strategy. Um, I'm going to draw a parallel. Uh, Don, you're right. Uh, the Guardian did talk explicitly about how Donald Trump had this virus, knew he had the virus, and could give a wit. He infected all sorts of people, including his buddy, Chris Christie, who, by the way, was in the hospital and fighting for his life. Um, you know, COVID, COVID Donnie was no different than Typhoid Mary. And in the end, Typhoid Mary went to jail because she didn't care who she infected. And the only reason she went to jail is because she infected a bunch of rich people, and that was the end of it. So, you know, um, when's enough is enough. And I'm going to wrap it up by saying uh, now's enough. So get tough, America. Get tough with the administration. And if you're worried about First Amendment violations and, and lawsuits, fine, deal with those. Let them go work their way up to the Supreme Court. But stop Fox and Friends um, and, and all the other social medias from spreading misinformation about vaccines and this new variant. It's, uh, we've had enough. And um, do the right thing. All right, Winston, you're but, but Tim, But uh, Tim, how, how do you really feel? You just got it. <laughs> How do you really feel? What are your final thoughts? I knew it. In a light comment. Uh, just repeating oh. the same. Take personal responsibility where you can. Try and hold our elected officials accountable for best public health practices. It's all we can do. Um, but at the end of the day, educating ourselves and our loved ones and those that we care about as best as we can to reality as we best understand it and trying to reach those that are until now afraid or confused or just wrong, we need to continue to do that. And uh, as new information comes available, share it. Uh, be kind to others. That's the way you're gonna get to them. It's not gonna be shouting at them and telling them they're stupid and wrong um, or evil or, or bad. Um, um, Thank you. Them them out to lunch if they switch off Instagram, TikTok and Facebook for a week, you know, give them a hundred bucks, I don't know. <laughs> All right, we have to wrap it up. Um, thank you for a strong discussion with, uh, with, with Rich, that's rich in uh, suggestions, recommendations, and must-dos and fed upness. Very helpful to us for understanding better the uh, impact of the Omicron variant um, on, on top of what we're already enduring from the other versions of the virus. So thank you, Jay Fidel, Tim. Apicella and Winston Welch for this discussion. And I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll Dalton. And this is Politics for the People. And we'll be here next week, Thursday, same time. Aloha. Mm -hmm.